My name is Arya and today we are going to go and discuss how to become an ethical hacker. Well, I'm going to be going over the following topics throughout the course of this session. Firstly, we're going to see who is an ethical hacker and then we are going to also discuss the roadmap that you could follow to become an ethical hacker yourself. We're going to be going over the pertinent certifications that are related to ethical hacking and in particular we'll be Discussing the CEH exam, we'll be going over the overview of the exam, the objectives and the eligibility criteria. We'll also be discussing the skills you might need to actually prepare for this exam and go and pass this exam with flying colors. We'll also be discussing the job trends and companies hiring in the ethical hacking area and also the salaries that they offer. Okay, now firstly, let's go over who exactly is an ethical hacker. Well, an ethical hacker, also known as a white hat hacker, is a computer security specialist who works to improve the security of an organization. An ethical hacker hacks into an organization with the owner's permission to find out vulnerabilities before any hacker with malicious intent can find them. Well, an ethical hacker is generally responsible for a few stuff that he works for in an organization. Firstly, he is responsible for protecting the privacy of the organization that they are working for. Secondly, he has to transparently report all the vulnerabilities and weaknesses they find in the system to the relevant people. Third, he has to inform vendors and suppliers about any weakness found in their hardware or software that is being used by the organization or business. Okay, now let's get to the main part of today's discussion, that is the roadmap to become an ethical hacker. Now, how your ethical hacking career begins depends on your current field of work. If you're not in an IT field already, you should definitely try shifting into one. Firstly, anybody trying to pursue ethical hacking as a career should definitely try getting a bachelor's degree in a field related to information technology, computer science, or cybersecurity. This is where the fundamentals of the basics of ethical hacking are inculcated in you as a student. Now, the curriculums generally are inclusive of networking, which teaches you the major network protocols and network architecture. They also teach you how to use databases and its various interactions with the client side of the computer. And also the working of operating systems, which is essential for an ethical hacking career. Now, after a bachelor's degree, it is recommended that you get a job because work experiences is essential. Most ethical hackers begin their career as tech support engineers who climb their way up by earning certifications like CCNA and CISSP before working towards the ultimate CEH certification that is. Now, when you are working for a company, you get hands-on experience with security tools that are used at an enterprise level. Also, people learn to work under pressure and think creatively too. Now, all that is left is to prepare yourself for the CEH examination. Now, some of you might be thinking that there's a lot to study and that's entirely true. Without help or structured way to go about the curriculum, people might find themselves getting lost in the burden and Edureka has a solution to this problem with our cybersecurity and ethical hacking courses. You will be taught on an online portal by an instructor who has profound experience in an ethical hacking career. You'll be studying from carefully curated content Above that, you'll also have a lifetime access to this content. So, not only are you learning from the right people, but also from the right content as well. Now, let me just mention that technical knowledge aside, an ethical hacker must be a creative thinker. Ethical hackers have to predict and prevent cracking activities, and this requires an out-of-the-box approach for solutions to general problems, as you have to stay one step ahead of a black hat hacker. Ethical hackers also need to be able to work under pressure with immaculate judgment. And last but not least, an ethical hacker must be proficient at communicating the problems he finds to the corresponding departments. Also, those who are skeptical about going to college could also pursue a military background. Having some experience in military, particularly in the intelligence faction, could help your resume get noticed by the necessary employers. Now, after getting an entry-level job as a tech support or security analyst, you might try attaining some of the more pertinent certifications, which will definitely give you a certain edge over the others when applying for a job. Let's discuss these with certifications that you might want to achieve first. Okay, now talking about certifications, talent and ability aren't established only by certifications. 
but they do help when provide proving your knowledge and skills to others. If you don't have an ample industry experience, a certification like CEH certainly helps. CEH is an unbiased credential with immense market value. According to Payscale, a CEH certified ethical hacker earns around $88,000 per annum. Apart from CEH, there are also a few other noteworthy certifications that prove your skill as an ethical hacker. For example, there's the SANS GIAC certification. There's also the Certified Vulnerability Assessor, which is the CVA certification. There's also the CPEN certification, which stands for Certified Professional Ethical Hacker, and also the CPTE, which stands for Certified Penetration Testing Engineer. For now, let's discuss the CEH certification. Well, the CEH certification is awarded to those who pass the exam, first of all. Now, the CEH exam is a multiple choice exam, which verifies your knowledge pertaining to the penetration testing structure and the tools used within that structure. It equips prospective job seekers in the information security industry with a solid start, making sure that the holders of the certificate know how to do the basics like information gathering, attacking computers or servers, performing wireless attacks, and even social engineering. Now, talking about the exam itself, as I just said, the exam is a multiple choice type exam. It has 125 questions that test all your knowledge on ethical hacking in a period of four years or 240 minutes per se, and the minimum passing criteria is 70%. Okay, now let's go over the objectives of the CEH exam. Well, firstly, the first objective is to inform the public that credentialed individuals meet or exceed the minimum standards of ethical hacking. Secondly, the CEH exam serves to establish and govern minimum standards for credentialed professionals of ethical hacking. Thirdly, the CEH exam also reinforces ethical hacking as a unique and self-regulating profession. Also talking about the eligibility criteria, there are a couple. Now, firstly, you need to attend a CEH training, an official CEH training rather. This can be in any format, for example, an instructor-led training or a computer-based training or live online training, as long as the program is approved by the EC Council. Now, the program at Edureka is approved by the EC Council and is also aligned to CEH, so it will certainly make you eligible for the CEH exam. Now, you can also attempt without some official training. In order to be considered for the EC Council certification exam without attending any sort of official training, you must have two or more years of documented information security experience. Well, that's it for eligibility. Let's go over the skill sets that you might require to become an ethical hacker. Well, firstly, a person with an ethical hacking career is expected to be proficient in database handling, networking, and operating systems, and also have excellent soft skills as they need to communicate problems regarding security to the rest of the organization. Other than these generalized skill sets, an ethical hacker also has to have a good grasp on the following set of skills. Firstly is network traffic scanning, or sniffing rather. Now sniffing is the process of monitoring and capturing all the packets passing through a given network using sniffing tools. It is a form of tapping phone wires and getting to know about the conversation happening over the network. It is also called wiretapping when applied to computer networks. Secondly, an ethical hacker should know how to orchestrate different types of network and database attacks as their main job is to predict a black hat hacker. And to do this, one must be able to think and act like a black hat hacker. Thirdly, ethical hackers have to deal with different kinds of operating systems on a daily basis, with Linux being the daily driver. So it is obvious that an ethical hacker needs to have an in-depth knowledge of the working of operating systems in general, for example, they need to know how to look for exploits in the buffer vulnerabilities. After that, ethical hackers also have to deal with different kind of database formats, whether it be SQL, PostgreSQL, or NoSQL. An ethical hacker at least needs a general knowledge of their working. Also, an ethical hacker should be proficient in crypto analysis, which is basically the deciphering of ciphertext without knowing the key to deciphering. This also means that the fundamentals of password cracking is generally imbued in this with methods like brute force and dictionary attacks getting their influence from cryptanalysis. Also, ethical hackers are generally endowed with the responsibility of network traffic monitoring. 
Therefore, they must be proficient in stuff like intrusion detection and prevention, session hijacking knowledge, and overall have an in-depth knowledge of networking in general. Also, ethical hackers have to make custom softwares to tackle the use case specific security flaws that might be affecting a company. So they generally need to write custom softwares. Now this requires general programming knowledge so that you can execute the solutions that you think of. And programming knowledge also helps you in automating a lot of tasks that would generally take a lot of precious time. Okay, with all these essentials covered, let's discuss the market for ethical hackers now. First of all, let's have a look at the job trends. Now growing at a rate that is outpacing all the other areas of the IT industry, cybersecurity has emerged as a high growth field of 2017 and possibly of the entire decade. During the five years between 2012 and 2017, listings for cybersecurity jobs increased by a whopping 75% according to the analysis made by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This has led to a lot of unfilled positions which include the delegations of that of an ethical hacker. Now, talking about the companies that hire ethical hackers, well, an ethical hacker finds a job in just about any company which has an internet-facing side or anything to do with the web at all. These include college institutions like MIT and even private companies like Wipro and ENY. Apart from private institutions, you also get a chance to work for the top secret intelligence gathering agencies like CIA, Mossad, and NSA. Okay, so that was all about companies. Now let's get to the most important question of the day. That is, how much money does an ethical hacker make? Well, certified ethical hackers make an average annual income of $88,000 according to Payscale. And also the average starting salary for a certified ethical hacker is set to be $95,000 according to the EC Council Senior Directive, Stephen Graham. And the founders of Novaya Security, Eric Gayo, estimates a more conservative $50,000 to $100,000 per year in the first years of work, depending on your employer, experience and education. Those with a few years of experience can also pull up to $120,000 and upwards per year particularly those people who work as independent consultants. Okay, guys, this brings us to the end of how to become an ethical hacker live session. I hope this session serves as adequate guidance to start off your preparation to become an ethical hacker. For more information regarding cybersecurity and ethical hacking, you could check out our other videos in the cybersecurity playlist. If you have any doubts or queries regarding this particular session, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. That's it for today. Goodbye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!